indoor stadium in Durham, North Carolina. The number seven ranked University of Maryland Terrapins meet the high scoring Duke Blue Devils in an Atlantic Coast Conference matchup. Tonight's exciting basketball game is brought to you by the following participating sponsors. Everybody, this is Vince Bagley along with Howard David from Cameron Indoor Stadium in uh, Durham, North Carolina. It's an indoor stadium now, but I want to tell you, Howard, if the noise keeps up, they might convert it into an outdoor stadium before we get out of here. I never heard such racket. Vince, I knew when we walked into this place tonight that it was going to be difficult to hear ourselves talk. And while on the surface, this game might not seem too critical in terms of the league championship, and it isn't so far as the regular season championship is concerned, it's still important to Maryland so far as postseason position is concerned. That's right, because this afternoon, North Carolina State was knocked off by Clemson, giving Maryland an opportunity to move into second position. And if they should tie NC State, having defeated them twice in the regular season, they would get the second spot. So I guess the... Uh, the uh, fact of staying away from North Carolina in an early game in the tournament would be crucial, and that's what Maryland hopes to do in winning tonight and going on to finish second. How about the, the Durham connection? I think that's interesting that uh, a young man has come back and playing here for the last time. We're, uh, uh, while you mention that, we're going to be seeing something tonight which is an innovation of the Mislu Television Network, and by that I mean the ISO light, which is what you're seeing on your screen now with John Lucas. John Lucas is making his final appearance in front of his hometown, Durham, North Carolina fans. And I know his mother and father are here, two outstanding people, and this is an outstanding basketball player. John Lucas is number one amongst the all-time leading scorers in Maryland history. Of course, he took that honor over a, you know, a few weeks ago. And if he gets 22 tonight, he'll match the year he was born with 1953. We'll be right back after these brief messages uh, from the, uh, well, we'll be back in a moment. We want to get another isolite. This is the Maryland team, of course, on the floor, greeted by the booze, which will get wilder. And here is Lucas. Uh, now here we back see him showing Tate Armstrong. Here we see Tate Armstrong out of Houston, Texas, and he last year was voted the top defensive player for this Duke team. And defense has been something that has been troubling Coach Foster of Duke uh, this year. They have been scoring a lot of points. Duke has, but Tate Armstrong uh, has been playing the best defense of the Duke Blue Devils. Okay, Howard, we'll be right back after these brief messages from our participating sponsors. The next feature of the Mislu Television Network will be another Atlantic Coast Conference matchup as Maryland will play host to Virginia next Saturday night, a week from tonight. Airtime will be at 8 p.m. over uh, many of these Mislu Television Network stations. Last time these two teams got together, Maryland beat Virginia, but only by three points. And that game took place in Charlottesville, Virginia. Should be another exciting contest next Saturday at 8. Maryland and Virginia on the Mislu Television Network. All right, at the Ken Cameron Indoor Stadium here in Durham, North Carolina, this is Howard David along with Vince Bagley. And this crowd is, although not 100% sold out, they are 150% alive for their Duke Blue Devils. And Vince, a team that is two and seven in the Atlantic Coast Conference, you would expect that the teams or the fans might not be as enthusiastic as they are. But you can hear it, the fans that are watching at home can see it for themselves. Well, they're a most exciting team to begin with, Howard. They give you a great show. There have been 34 Atlantic Coast Conference games so far this year, and 20 of those games have been decided by less than five points, and Duke has been involved in eight, and they've won two and lost six, but what a magnificent, exciting job they've done. Now the National Anthem.
Charles Smith and the Duke Pep Band and 100% cooperation and participation in the prideful singing of our national anthem. Vixen, looking over the records of Duke uh, over the course of years, a lot of famous names come up. Dick Groat, who was the NCAA Player of the Year in basketball, 1951. Also had a great career in baseball, as we know. Artie Hyman, who was a, a consensus NCAA Player of the Year, went here to Duke, 1963. Jeff Mullins, Jack Marin, the names and list keeps going on and on. Maryland, of course, with Tommy McMillan and Lenny Elmore, Gene Shue. Uh, both these schools have had outstanding talent in past years, and this year's additions of these two squads uh, is really no different. No they both question. have outstanding personnel. Absolutely. And you know, you mentioned Jack Marin, who played a lot of years with the Baltimore Bullets, has been in the NBA since his graduation in 1966. And he was instrumental in getting Tate Armstrong to come to Duke. You mentioned John Lucas, mother and dad are here tonight. Of course, they're natives of Durham. Tate Armstrong's folks came from Houston, Texas to see their son play. His most recent game, a 40-point effort against North Carolina State. And he's been averaging around 37 the last uh, few weeks. And a magnificent youngster is a junior. And he's over 23 points for the season. So we'll watch number 12, as will Maryland on defense tonight. You know, as we look now at the uh, Maryland bench, of course, you and I and uh, uh, the fellows uh, from Ms. Luke Television Network had the opportunity to speak to uh, Edith Slaughter, who's the baseball coach here at Duke. So they've got famous people running all up and down this campus here in Durham, North Carolina. I tell you, I think Edith would be down there talking to us now if it weren't time for basketball. We right. sat through the, the wrestling match this afternoon. Here's Brad Davis being introduced. The great treat to talk to Edith Slaughter. Brad Davis, one of the great guards from Monaca, Pennsylvania. And Mo Howard from Philadelphia coming out to uh, play in the backcourt with him. And the big guy, uh, Lawrence Boston, who jumps center for the Turks. They'll save Lucas for last, I suppose. Yeah, and then Steve Shepard has done a fine job inside number 10, another forward. And here's John Lucas, his last public introduction in his hometown of Durham. He's had a great career. And Lefty Grizzell. <laughs> uh, Lefty's not too well liked there in Durham. And although he went to Duke. Yes, he's another one of the great names we, uh, we neglected as a player in Duke. Now the Devils are introduced. Mark Crow, number 25. And big George Moses, the New York boy, who's a great inside man. Willie Hodge from San Antonio, Texas, will play up front with those two guys. The guards. There's really a swing man. Jim Spinarco from Jersey City and Tate Armstrong. Man, what noise. All right, we'll be back in just 60 seconds after these messages from your local station. at the Cameron Indoor Stadium here in Duro, North Carolina. Howard David along with Vince Bagley. The officials ready to go. Lawrence Boston a little bit premature on the jump. Here's the tap, and it is controlled by Lucas of Maryland. So the Terps, clad in their traveling red uniforms, first possession of the basketball game. Duke in a man-for-man -man defense. And the crowd at Durham calling for defense. Pass inside is Spinarco. Jim Spinarco on the steal. First turnover of the ball game. And it cost the Terps of Maryland in the bucket. The Duke crowd, no question where they are. Steve Shepard to the hole. Boston on the rebound. Back up in and out of the hole, but he was fouled on the play. They're working a 1-3-1 uh, with Tate out front. And they got uh, Boston. It went up. Maryland, a good percentage shot from Shepard that missed. All right, here we Boston see it again. For it. Here we see it again. Lawrence Boston on the follow, and he was hit right there by number 25, Mark Crow. So Boston will go to the free throw line and shoot two shots. Lawrence Boston putting Maryland on the board for the first time tonight. Boston, a 64% free throw shooter. Has been the starting center since uh, Gibson has been injured, and Gibson probably will not be back if he's back at all. Maybe for the playoffs, but probably not then. He makes them both, and we're tied at two. First minute of the ball game. Tate Armstrong by himself. Pretty drive. Here's Tate Armstrong once again. Look at the strides of a two-handed shot to the hole and kisses off the glass at home. 
Pretty drive by Tate Armstrong. Four to two, the Blue Devils lead it. All right, Duke shifting now into a zone. They started out man for man. They've now gone to a 2-1-2 two -two zone. With Shepard, the man in the middle. Here's Lucas. Boston on the fellow. And again, Lawrence Boston making his presence known inside. Boston with all four Maryland points, and Boston with a steal. Something tells me Lawrence Boston came to play tonight. That's Davis, calling for the set play. Looks to me a bit like Maryland, or like Duke, as Lucas puts up the jumper and hits it. John Lucas for his first field goal. Looks to me like uh, Duke is trying a combination kind of yeah, a that's sag. Right. They were one three one and then two two. Bo oh, Howard on the foul as he fouls Tate Armstrong driving to the hoop. Well, they figured he let him go the last time. He wasn't picked up anybody behind him, and Tate hung in the air and drove to make it. This time he got him. Figuring I don't know whether I'll get help behind me. And Armstrong shoots two. Armstrong's average uh, from the line is 77 percent. And his scoring average for the year, 23.2. The youngster from Houston. And when Jack Marin was in the NBA playing at the Houston Rockets, he encouraged Tate to come to Duke. And he did it. He's a psychology major in his junior year. Armstrong now with three points. Duke trailing Maryland, 6-5. to five, And the score remains 6-5 as he misses the second half with a two-shot foul. And as per usual, Davis flying down the court. Trying to work the ball around. Howard in the corner. We've gone off of that. They've thrown combination defense in there. Duke has again. Lucas from long range. He can do it. Lucas has found a spot on the floor and he puts Maryland ahead eight to five with two and a half minutes into the ball game. There's Crow for Duke. Lucas picking up Spinarco right on top of him now. Behind the screen, Spinarco down the lane. He traveled with him, but they didn't call it. <laughs> I think it might have, the dribble might have been interrupted by a defensive hand, which All right, made it look like it. We're going to see it now. You'll see Spinarco take a couple of too many steps. All right, now he drives to the hole. The ball is poked from behind. He's still, while well, he doesn't have possession, so maybe traveling was not, in, uh, not the right call. But the ball is knocked out of bounds, and it is Duke's ball. As again, Armstrong in the lane. Tate Armstrong for five points, eight to seven. Duke, uh, Maryland in front as Lucas misses from the corner and Moses with a rebound. Tate Armstrong, who keys the offense down the floor, pulls up with a jumper, in and out. That one was halfway down the well and came right back up. Davis, pretty pass to Lucas inside. As Brad Davis, with eyes all over the floor, saw Lucas hanging underneath, and John now with six points, Maryland in front 10 to seven, with 16 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Pass intended for Crow, thrown by Willie Hodge, goes astray, and Maryland will get it on the turnover. Third turnover against Duke, Maryland has two, and the teams are calling timeout. With timeout on the floor, the score, is Maryland 10 and Duke 7. Duke running with one of the runningest outfits in the country and have scored that way. Maryland, on the other hand, uh, faced with his own defense against it, uh, has Lucas set up to hit the shots that he likes from the side. So both teams scoring the way they like to. Maryland overloading, opening up Lucas from the side for the one-handers, and uh, Duke running with Tate Armstrong's five points, leading them in the early going. Maryland ahead 10 to 7. Howard? John Lucas leading all scorers right now with six points as Maryland has the basketball and that three-point lead. I'd like to go into, uh, when we get a moment, why the Maryland players are wearing uh, the black cloth patches on the right uh, stra strap of their uniforms. It's in memory of a uh, former Maryland basketball player, Owen Brown. Here's Davis to Lucas now. In the corner is Howard. Shepard up the line. Right of the lane, jumper. And the rebound of Crow. Nobody under for Maryland. Armstrong guarded by Mo Howard, and Howard usually gets the tough assignment defensively. Spinarco with a hole. He's a freshman from Jersey City. Good baseball player, too. 10 to 9. Maryland in front by a point with 15 and a half minutes remaining first half. Defense, defense. Duke 
ranked right up near the top in the uh, nation in scoring offense, averaging about 92 points a ball game. Of course, Nevada, Las Vegas is tops in the country. Mo Howard for the right side. Kisses it off the glass. Pretty shot by Mo Howard. His first field goal of the night. Maryland lead now by three again, 12 to nine. The follow, ready follow by Willie Hodge, number 14. Willie with a, an almost an 18 point average. Again, Lucas from the right side, way short of the mark. Ball knocked out of bounds by Duke. And of course, the crowd does not agree with that call. 12 to 11, Maryland in front of Duke with 14.53 remaining of the half. You know, we came into the building at four, uh, around four o'clock to make an interview with president of the college, Terry Sanford. The kids had already gathered. They want those good seats behind the bench to harass Lefty Drizel. But that'll come later. All right corner, Lucas is free. Look out. John Lucas is murder. Can't when you give, give him, him room. That. Can't give him that one. He has eight points, 14 to 11, Maryland by three. Crow from outside. That turns the crowd on. Davis right down the floor. Here's Howard. This one's off the mark, and again, here's Spinarco. On the lead to Crow in the corner. Mark Crow with two great field goals, and Duke takes the lead, 15-14, with 14-15 remaining of the half. Shepard on the pass off Spinarco on the good defensive play. Oh, we get a whistle and a charge has been called on Steve Shepard. Steve going to the hoop very aggressively all game long, and uh, they got him that time. Good play by Spinarco, Howard, as you said. Quick hands, he's a baseball first baseman. And Ina Slaughter was saying if that basketball coach, Bill Foster, can get him in here, I'm sure I can use him. He's looking forward to the spring. Second team foul against Maryland. Shepard and Howard each with one. And while Duke only has one team foul, and Maryland all-court pressure. Shepard picking up Moses. Now Armstrong picked up by Howard. Here's Armstrong on the backdoor try to Spinarco, but a good defensive play by Maryland knocking it away. Spinarco ahead of Shepard going to the hole, but a good defensive play by Steve as he knocks it out of bounds. Duke still possession of the ball, and there's a foul on Lawrence Boston as he knocks over Tate Armstrong. All right, here we're going to see it. Here's Lefty. Lefty not really excited over that ball. Here we see it. You'll see Boston lower right corner of your screen and Armstrong goes down for the count. Much the same way that Jean-Pierre Coopman went down oh, last night. That isn't even a comparison. <laughs> we put Tate Armstrong or Boston in there. Nice, nice pass. Cool. Nice pass inside, but a good defensive play by Maryland for turnover against Duke. Here's Howard on the pass from Davis. Brad Davis with his second assist. Howard with four points, Maryland by one. Armstrong down the line, and I think he's going to get nailed. They're calling it an Armstrong on the charge. All right, we'll, we'll get a shot at seeing this one. Yeah, that's right. We Picking watched it up. Him, watched him work out yesterday. He works with great intensity in practice. This kid, the whole team does. The Duke Club, we watched him yesterday afternoon. Here's Armstrong. Meanwhile, while we're showing the replay, Davis. as the replay completes itself, Davis took the full front of it. We go back down to the floor. That is Jim Spinarco. That was uh, shaken up on the last play. And it looks like uh, it might be a leg injury of some sort, but he is, it looks like he's in a lot of pain down there. Of course, a very concerned Bill Foster looking this, over his fine freshman athlete. This is an intense player. We, uh, they talked about him yesterday. He's been, he's been uh, under the bench yet. Watch his legs come out from under him. He's under the benches and every place else all year. All right, 34 He's is the guy we got to look at. Looking up at the basket directly under it. Now watch what happens here. He was lowballed. Well, with a timeout on the court, the score is Maryland 16, Duke 15. Spinarco uh, got up and moved off the floor under his own power. Will. All right, now watch this pass as Davis comes down the floor, straight to the top of the key, stops at the line. He looks to his left, looks to his right, shoots the pass to the right. Mo Howard turns Willie Hodge all the way around. Pretty play by Brad Davis to set up the field goal. 
We got a substitution. Paul Fox into the game to replace the swing man, Jim Spinarkle. I think Spinarkle will be back, Howard, but uh, right now he's being attended by the trainers on the side. That's a shame. Spinarkle, a very exciting player. Paul Fox, as you mentioned, in the ballgame now, number 22 right there. Trying to work it around the zone. It looked like they're playing, uh, you know, they're trying to collapse on that zone. As Davis now over Armstrong, cross court. Lucas trying to work it. Shepard takes it away from Willie Hodge. Mismatch in size there. Shepard double team. Here's where you got to work the ball around. Lucas is free Dingo. in the corner. Missed the shot. That's how you have to work the basketball. When you see a man double team, they got to look for the open man. Maryland tried it. Lucas was free, but he missed the shot. All right, Duke on the offense now. Inside pass, pretty. Willie Hodge missed the shot, but a foul was called on a play. Nice pass by George Moses. Moses really drilled that pass. Willie Hodge had his man beat to the inside. He missed the layup, but he was fouled on the play by Lawrence Boston, and that is two on Lawrence Boston. So actually, now, actually, Moses opened at the top of the key for a fairly good percentage shot, but he doesn't shoot from any distance at all, and uh, whenever he has it outside, you can figure he'll look inside and give it off, as he did, and Hodge missed the basket because he was fouled and now the first free throw. Hodge, a 76% free throw shooter, coming into the ball game for Maryland, making his first appearance of the night is Newsom. Howard comes out of the ball game. John Newsom, who's played a little more lately. Ten Will ball games. Willie Hodge makes his second free throw. We're knotted at 16 with 12.50 remaining in the half. Lee has changed hands a few times. Lucas down low to Boston, looking for Shepard inside. It's poked away. Nice play by Newsom, tapping it to Davis. Tell good. you, Duke's not giving him anything inside, are they? Good defense. Boston from the corner. No good, but Newsom on the rebound. And it finally drops through. Newsom, a little overspin on it, I guess. He got it, although Boston's hand was up near the hoop. Maryland by two with 12.20 remaining in the half, 18.60. NC State got beat by Clemson earlier today, so this game very important to Maryland for a position for the ACC tournament. Watch Moses down low. He's a big, strong guy. Here's Armstrong from downtown. <laughs> Nate Armstrong with seven points. He had 37, didn't he, against Maryland the last time. All right, here we see the ISO light on Armstrong and Lucas. And here you see as Lucas tries to break down the blocking, Armstrong was free once, and now finally he decides to put up the shot, and he makes it. 24 feet away, you give it to him. As Lucas in the corner, pretty pass to Newsom, and he traveled with it. Newsom had either a shot or to draw the foul, and then he elected to pass off, and they get nothing out of it but a turnover number three against the Terrapins. We're tied at 18 with 11.40 remaining of the half here at the Cameron Indoor Stadium over the Duke Blue Devils. That's Crow on the right side, Newsom guarding him. George Moses, pretty pass to Crow on the turnaround. He didn't know he had it. Mark Crow at six points, and Duke regains the lead, 20 to 18. 11 15 to go, first half of play. Lucas is free, passed up the shot a little bit too far. Davis being guarded here by Armstrong. Armstrong, as I mentioned before, the better defensive player, one of the better defensive players on Duke's team, got to put pressure on the ball. I tell you, Maryland can't get it inside. If they have to rely on the outside shooting of Lucas all night long, it's going to be a long night. They tried a lot of different combinations. Very concerned. Lefty Grizel right there. Duke fans are flooding the defense, and Duke is playing some defense. There's Foster. Bill Foster right there. And we got a foul inside on Paul Fox, I believe. We'll see it again. Fox comes out, but here you'll see Brad Davis going to the hole. Fox playing bump and run with him, and he finally hit him right on the right arm. Even though it was apparent that Brad wasn't going to shoot the ball. Not shooting foul. That is the third team foul against Duke. Maryland has four team fouls here on the half. 
exhibit, you go into the bonus. 20 to 18, Duke in front with 10-15 remaining in the half. You watch this Duke team play defense, and you wonder why Bill Foster has got a concern on his mind about if they can play D. Nice pass by Lucas to Shepard. Yeah, a quick move. And yet it looked as ill he dribbled it once too often, but he got away with it. Well, Lucas penetrated very nicely and passed off. Here's Crow from way outside. Back tap, and Lucas will start the fast break. They've got it three on two. John Lucas by himself. Rebound is fought for. Who's got it? Morrison. Harold Morrison. A. Armstrong over the top, and Davis and Davis to get to the foul. And Lefty Drizel is livid. Man, oh, man. Lefty is, is really upset. All right, we'll watch it again as we see a very upset Lefty Drizel. Lefty is really smoking, the head coach of the Terps. He thought the foul should have gone on Armstrong. All right, here we'll see it again. Watch the lower left-hand corner of your screen on this replay. You'll see Dave Armstrong being knocked over or going right over the top of uh, Davis, and Davis is the man with a foul. Well, there's a timeout on the court. The score is Maryland 20 and Duke 20. Let's pause for one minute for these messages from your local stations. All right, the score is 20 to 20, Maryland and Duke. Another exclusive feature of the Mislu Television Network. 9.39 remaining of the first half. You know, that defensive position, offensive possession is a is a moot point a lot of times. It's it's a very, very tough call. Brad Davis drew his first foul. That's team foul number five on Maryland as Armstrong makes the first half of the foul. Armstrong now with eight points in the ball game. He and Lucas each with eight. And Armstrong now the game leader with nine. Duke again in front by two, 22 to 20. John Newsom of the game, that number 20. Lucas, right corner, Davis. Trying to work the ball around. Duke playing excellent defense, and Fox draws the foul. Ball Fox, number 22, draws his second personal foul. A non-shooting foul. That is only the fourth foul. All right, now we'll get a look at Brad Davis in the isolite. Number 30, as he moves without the ball from Monica P.A., and here you'll see the foul by Fox. Not right here. And now he gets up on him, slaps him on the arm, and the foul is called. Davis from outside off the front iron. Shepard trying to get the offensive rebound, but Crow took it away from him. Here's Duke on the fast break. Willie Hodge. 24 20. Duke in front. Kate Armstrong keying the fast break. 8.50 remaining in the half, and Duke ahead by four. And for these two teams, a very low-scoring game up to this point. Maryland's not getting anything inside. Duke scoring on its fast break the way they want to do it. 24-20, Duke in front. As Boston's turnaround is blocked. But a foul inside. Steve Shepard is fouled by Crow. Fighting for the block shot. Crow commits the foul. Mark Crow his second personal. As Mo Howard comes back into the game, Harold Morrison goes out of the game, replaced by George Moses. And a 15 foul on the Blue Devils. Each team has five. But again, a non-shooting foul. Maryland only retains possession. All right. Again, they try to work it around as Duke in front by four with 8.25 remaining, 24-20. Moses playing strong defense on Davis. Drives baseline. Howard is free for the jumper. And the tip in by Lawrence Boston. The Duke crowd screaming for goaltending. It came off. We'll see it again right here. Here's the shot by Howard. Comes out of the cylinder. So that's and legal. Boston on the right side for the tip. Shot missed there by Duke. And Shepard's rebound. He's fouled by Willie Hodge. Willie Hodge committing his first foul. And Duke is now at the limit with six team fouls of the first half. Duke ahead, 24-22 with 8.02 remaining of the half. Maryland using Lucas up front uh, 
Boston in the back. We'll give it to Davis, and they'll go from his operation or direction. All right, Boston Brad, down deep. Brad Davis holding off for a set play. In the corner, Lucas. Again, they try to work it around. Shepard trying to take Hyde inside. It's a mismatch there. John Lucas got it by Moses. Again, they try to work it around the outside. Duke playing excellent defense. Brad Davis on the bounce pass outside. Very dangerous pass. Howard takes a step, puts up the shot, and it's way short. And George Moses comes down with the air ball. Duke controlling the tempo of the ball game, although they only lead it by two. Tate Armstrong was fouled before the shot. Oh, he'll, he'll, he'll scream continuation on that one. The foul is on Willie Hodge as we see Lefty Drizel on the ISO light. And look at Lefty. Cut about, up. About time he got one right, he's saying. Somebody stepped on my corns. <laughs> Willie Hodge got the last foul. That is his second. And Duke now over the limit. John Lucas is free in the corner. Missed the shot. And throw again with a rebound. Duke 24, Maryland 22 with seven minutes remaining of the half. Here at the Cameron Indoor Stadium in Durham, North Carolina. Tate Armstrong in the color. Knocks over Shepard. No foul is called. Shepard and Armstrong are tangled up, and Steve Shepard is and holding his ankle. All right, we're going to see it again. I'm going to tell you, this Armstrong is going to destroy himself. All right, Armstrong now, guarded by Howard. Now you look at Shepard. Shepard hangs back to try to pick up Armstrong as he comes to the lane. He establishes his position, and Armstrong goes right over the top of Steve Shepard. The foul was called on Tate Armstrong. That is his second, but Steve Shepard. He's still on his back. Now they got him up, and now we have uh, Tate Armstrong trying to get up. All right. As you pointed out, uh, Vince, uh, Steve Shepard, although he is up on his feet, he is limping by the Maryland bench. But there we see Tate Armstrong on his back. And I don't know what the extent of his injury is as yet. But uh, Duke can ill afford to lose Tate Armstrong. He is too valuable to this team. He makes the offense go. He keys the offense and plays good defense. And there is a concern, Bill Foster, right there. This is an obvious uh, arm injury. Bill Foster, the reigning president of the National Association of Basketball Coaches. As Armstrong gets up. He's, he's, only, <laughs> he's only a junior being highly touted by the writers around here for Atlantic Coast Conference. I think he cracked his elbow as he hit the floor. I don't think the result... The uh, injury came as a result of the collision, but after what happened when he hit the floor. Armstrong comes out of the ball game, replaced by Kenny Young. Kenny Young, a very, very quick guard. Duke in front, 24-22 with 6.45 remaining of the first half. Maryland with only five team fouls in the half, while Duke is over the limit. Kenny Young picks up Brad Davis, and Young is quick enough to stay with him. Duke in that 2-1-2 zone. As the Maryland Terps try to work it around, his Paul Fox on the steal. Oh, Fox! Shot blocked by John Lucas. And now they're calling it goaltending. Oh, bring it back, fellas. There's a goaltending on the last play. Paul Fox will get credit for it, and now we will see the play again. Brad Davis dribbling the basketball. Now when it comes back to him, Fox reaches in, hooks the ball free, chases it down the left side. You'll see Lucas come into your picture from the right. The shot is up on the glass, and Lucas gummed it. So it is goaltending. Good call by the officials. 26-22 the score. Duke in front with 6-10 remaining in the half. Maryland has their problems with these blue, Duke Blue Devils as Shepard goes to the hole. Steve Shepard only four points for the night. Duke's lead is two. As the Devils come back down the floor, shot missed and a rebound of Boston. The quick outlet to Mo Howard. Brad Davis trying to make it happen. They work it around the outside. Shepard looking for the free man. And the way Duke is playing defense, they're not going to see too much of that. Really hard to believe that the score is only 26-24. With 5.35 remaining in the half, Duke in front by a couple. And when these two teams get together, usually the scores are quite high. Shepard, short pop. 
Shepard with six points in the ball game. We're tied at 26. 5.20 remaining of the half. Throw guarded by Davis. Maryland remaining in the man for man. Kenny Young. Moses looking for the back door, but Maryland broke it apart. Good defense by the Terps. Fox was cutting from the right on the back door, but the door was closed this time. 5.12 remaining in the half. And Duke and Maryland deadlocked at 26. Spinarco returning to the floor. That's what the applause is about. They'll put Armstrong together, and I think they'll both get back in it. All right, the inbound comes to Kenny Young. Guarded by Howard. Throw guarded by Davis. Willie Hodge guarded by Boston. They work it around. Young with quick speed. Let's fly. And the rebound of Shepard. A quick outlet to Davis as he tries to get around Young. Young is very, very quick and can stay with Brad Davis. Mo Howard from the corner. Good. Howard with six points. Maryland leads it. 28 to 26 with 443 remaining in the first half of play. And with a timeout here at Cameron Indoor Stadium, the score, Maryland 28 and Duke 20. Howard, I want to tell you, for a team noted for offense, and Duke is last in the league in defense, averaging 85 points allowed per game. They're playing a tremendous first half for their combination of, of zones, switching from a 1-3-1 to a 2-2-1 to all sorts of ball chasers out in the front in the 1-3-1. Armstrong is back in it. I was going to mention that as Howard picks him up. Armstrong, apparently all right. Spinarco is back on the bench for Duke. We may see him before the game is over. Here's Armstrong on the fadeaway. And the follow by Willie Hodge. All right, we'll see it again. Willie Hodge, watch him go to the hole to follow Armstrong's shot. Off the front iron, and Willie Hodge right there on the follow. Pretty play by Willie Hodge. He has seven points. We're tied at 28 with 4-10 remaining of the first half. Here in Durham, North Carolina, Howard David along with Vince Bagley. And Chris Patton in the game in the low post. Right there. Here's Patton way off the mark. But shipping on the rebound, forget it, they're going to call the foul on Paul Fox. And that is bonus. his third. And Maryland in the bonus situation right now, uh, shooting with Shepard on the line. All right, here we'll see it again. The... All right, we'll see Chris Patton, left of the lane, takes it to the hole. Big six foot eight guy over the top. I think uh, Moses. I don't believe the shot was blocked. He just missed. Uh, he just caught the back uh, back side of the rim. Good defense by Moses. Forced the trajectory way offline. Shepard at the line misses the free throw and the rebound of Duke. We're tied at 28 with 350 remaining in the first half. Maryland remaining in that man for man. Crow 25. George Moses holding it up high, looking for the quick pass. Duke moving very well without the ball. Their players are moving. They're cutting to the basket, looking for the quick pass, looking for the back door. But Maryland, on the other hand, picking them up. And Maryland playing good defense, too, you know it. Well, Howard, uh, 28 points. With 28 points on either side, both teams playing just superb defense. Here's Fox taking Lucas inside, and John caught him on the right arm. All right, we'll get a chance to see John Lucas right there on the replay. Fox takes see. the lead pass from 25 Crow, drives left of the lane. You'll see Lucas get him on the right arm as he goes to the hole. Fox putting the ball up with a right hand from the left side. Uh, had a better percentage of having himself foul, too. Teams having their problems at the free throw line. That was John Lucas's first foul, and Maryland is still not over the limit. They are at the limit with 16 fouls. Fox makes the second. He has three points in the ball game. Duke has regained the lead, 29-28, as Lucas goes by Armstrong. Howard from the corner, and he was fouled by George Moses. His first foul, 3-14 remaining of the first half. Moses commits his first foul. Duke has been over the limit for the last four minutes. So Mo Howard will go to the line as Kenny Young checks back into the ball game, replacing Paul Fox, who goes out with three personal fouls and three points as well. Mo Howard out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. On the two-shot foul, he catches the first. Mo now with seven points in the ball game. Lucas leads the Terps with eight. Good balanced attack by Maryland. 84% free throw shooter, this young man. Missed the second one. I said, like I said before, teams having their problems making the charity tosses. 
We're tied at 29 with 3.05 remaining of the first half. The lead is seesawed back and forth. Duke has had the lead more than Maryland, but only the biggest lead they had was four. The biggest Maryland lead was two. Here's Crow from way downtown. Mark Crow with eight points. He's a 52% shooter, and he hits from the outside uh, three but times tonight. 31-29, Duke in front. 240 remaining in the first half. Pretty pass inside the Patton from Boston, and he blew it. Tough shot. He instead, was of going, instead of going to the right of the basket, he decided to go up and underneath on the reverse, which was a less of a percentage shot. And Moses bumped by Chris Patton. Patton, his first personal foul, and Maryland, for the first time of the ballgame, is now over the limit. So Duke goes into the bonus as Brad Davis comes into the ball game replacing six foot eight Chris Patton. Here we take a look at uh, Bill Foster. What a fine coach he is. Coached at Rutgers, coached at Utah. Now he's been here since March of 74 at Durham to coach the Duke Blue Devils. Moses misses the free throw, but Hodge on the rebound puts it in. Boston tipped it back up on the glass and Willie Hodge on the follow. He now has nine points. 33-29. Duke in front by four with 2.15 remaining in the first half. Maryland trying to work it. Mo Howard picked up by the quick Kenny Young. Brad Davis trying to work it around. John Lucas goes by Crow, left of the lane, short pop, finally dropped through. What a touch. John Lucas, first man of the ball game to go to double figures. He has 10. 33-31, Duke by two with a minute 50 remaining of the half. Very low scoring game between these two teams. Maryland averaging about 90 a game. Duke around in that same category. Hodges shot is off the side of the glass and a pushing I think, foul. I think Hodges got him. The call is on. Willie Hodge. Yeah. The call is on Willie Hodge and that is the third personal, I believe. Well, the scoreboard shows the foul was on Tate Armstrong. But I believe the foul was on Willie Hodge. Hodge comes out. Correction, no, it is on Willie Hodge. He gets his third as he comes out of the ballgame. And he's replaced by Terry Chili. Terry Chili at 6'10", a senior from Jamestown, New York. He's a, one of the co-captains of the club, along with Willie Hodge. Steve Shepard to the line, a one and one. Makes the first, and with the second one, he can tie it at 33. Minute and 39, remitting first half. The Bear misses the second one. John Lucas on the steal. He saves it, but it rolls right back out of bounds. Good hustle by John Lucas. Shepard with seven points in the ballgame now. 33-32, the Duke Blue Devils lead the Maryland Terrapins by a point with a minute and a half remaining in the first half. Kenny Young looking over the situation. Perhaps Duke is playing for one shot before the half. See what they're going to do, whether looks or not like, they are going to sit on it. Looks like a five-point game, doesn't it? One way or the other. They've been 20 out of 34 this year in the league, and Duke has been involved in eight five-pointer less games. Most recently losing them up, Carolina State in overtime. Crow with a jumper. Moses slaps it right outside, but Lucas comes down with a loose ball with exactly a minute remaining in the half. Lucas in the corner as Maryland trails by a one. Inside pass to Shepard. Crowd screaming for a three-second violation on the Bear. Here's Steve and Chili on the rebound. Look at John Lucas play both ends of the floor. Looking for the loose ball. Tate Armstrong blocked and throw on the follow. He was fouled. Nice ending up all over the floor tonight, Vince. I'll tell you. Indeed he is. You know, Moses, when he doesn't get the ball off the board, does such a great job of blocking out. The foul is on 24 Howard. Here we see John Lucas in the ISO light, moving without the ball. Here he almost came up with that steal. About two inches closer, and he goes in for an easy layup. The guy plays both ends of the floor. This is what the pros like to see. He should go very high on the trap. Red Auerbach was in town. He's been scouting the South, and uh, he says among the people in the league, he likes best Bill Ford, the North Carolina guard, then Cup Jack Carr, Lucas, and Davis as future pros. All right, the free throw is made by Crow. He now has nine points. Maryland trailing Duke 34-32 with 30 seconds remaining in the half. Here's a turnover. 
Duke coming up with a loose ball, and they may sit on it for one shot before the half. Yep, that's what they're going to do. Bill Foster, the Duke coach, has just signaled for one shot. They'll wind the clock down, move the ball around, and then attack the hoop for the last shot before the half. Duke in front by two with 10 seconds remaining. Does he keep it until he shoots? Armstrong looks like the man inside pass to Moses. Oh. What a play. Pass to Moser. He's Duke. harder underneath. Look at a very disappointed Lexi Giselle going to the locker room. Duke takes the lead at the half, 36 to 32. That's the end of the first half with the score. Duke 36 and Maryland 32. a feature that was created, an innovation of the Mislu Television Network. Gives you more of an insight as to what is really happening. You get a chance to see the players moving without the ball and isolating on some really fine play by the individuals. We talk about Cameron Indoor Stadium as we have many times, Howard. Eddie Cameron was here for 47 years, athletic director, basketball coach, living healthily in retirement. And that named the stadium after him in 1939. Steve Shepard, a 66% free throw shooter, makes the three-point play. And Maryland closes to within two, 55-53. Shepard with 16 points, 8.35, remaining in the ball game. Duke has led most of the way. As a matter of fact, they led all of the second half, leading at halftime by four. Here's Crow with four fouls, Moses with four. Hodge, if you missed the action, has already fouled out. Armstrong from way outside. Shepard fighting for the ball, but Crow with the rebound. Mark Crow at 17 points, 57-53. Duke. Brad Davis for Maryland. 8:05 remaining. Mo Howard all the way inside. Pretty drive, and it comes up short. On the outlet to Fox, ahead to Armstrong, taking it inside the lane. Mo Howard had saved the rebound, but right to Armstrong. He missed the shot, but Terry Kelly with the rebound. 53 Duke ahead as we're seen again on the ISO light. Tate Armstrong going inside. Chili as the shot is missed. Bo Howard saves, but right to Armstrong. He missed the shot and the tip in by Terry Chili. That's what happens when you're in the right place at the right time. For the biggest lead of the game at six and 59 to 53. They mop up the floor and here come the Turks. With only 7.45 remaining in the ball game. Brad Davis for the pop. Kisses it off the glass. Pretty shot by Davis. He has eight points all of the second stanza. 59-55. Duke by four. With seven and a half remaining. Ball box. Ball handling. Here's Crow. Armstrong now is a foul away from the play. And it's going to go against Terry Chili. He's holding Pat. Terry Chili gets the foul. And Lefty Drizel makes some uh, substitutions as we see this underneath. You'll see them move the ball around the outside. Now, in the right-hand corner, we'll get a chance to see this as we see Armstrong in the center of your screen. And uh, Terry Chili was definitely holding on the play away from the ball. Back to live action. Lawrence Boston back in the game, along with Brian Maggot. As Howard goes out, and so does Chris Pack. Brad Davis on the pass, but a nice defensive play by Paul Fox. Right there, number 22. All right, Maryland still with the basketball. Brian Maggot with a deadly shot from outside if he gets a chance to use it. Duke ahead by four with 6.55 remaining. Brian Maggot trying to take it inside and Fox blocked the shot. Armstrong for Duke. The Blue Devils lead it by four. Crow on the turnaround comes up short, but Chili on the fellow. But Terry Chili inside on the follow will knock it up and in. Pretty move by Chili, getting good position. Second tip in for him. Lucas inside goes right through the big guys for the lay in. John Lucas with 16 points. He and Shepard each with 16. Mark Crow leads all scorers. He has 17. 
And Mark Broke came into the game only averaging 12. 61-57. Duke by four with 6.05 remaining. And the Duke Blue Devils call for timeout. So, with a timeout on the floor, there you see the score. Duke 61, Maryland 57. Story of the ball game, Maryland not getting anything from the big men inside. Duke, on the other hand, with guys like Jillian Hodge and Moses scoring a lot from inside. Tipping, keeping the ball alive on the offensive board for the big guys to convert. Maryland has had a few penetrations on drives by Lucas and Howard and Davis. But uh, their big man, uh, Chris Patton, hitting from the outside, and Maryland not getting anything from uh, Boston offensively in the second half. So down by four with 6.05 left. Maryland has a long way back. All right, Maryland now on the defense. Duke's Tate Armstrong. By Junior giving it off to Crow. Fox handed by Brian Maggot. Duke passing it around, looking for the good shot. With 5.50 remaining to the ball game. And Duke ahead, 61 to 57. The Blue Devils have controlled this entire second half, leading at one point by six. Armstrong isolating on Lucas, takes him in the lane. Shot is way short, but Chile underneath is called for traveling. But again, he got the offensive rebound, and that's been the tempo of the second half. The big guys dominating the offensive board for Duke. You see Chile crashing those boards again. Oh, and uh, his momentum carried him back for the traveling violation. All right, now Maryland with a chance to draw them within two. Maggot might be a little gun shy because he's missed two. They're the shots he'd ordinarily take in the left corner. All right, now as they try to move it around against this real fine Duke 2-1-2. So they've really played that well. Davis trying to free, get Maggot on the good fake, short jumper, he finally cans it. That'll help him. Brian Maggot closes the Duke lead at 2, 61-59, less than five minutes remaining in the ball game. The Duke fans are all standing, almost all the way around the gym. From the corner, crew. And alive. Boy, he's been the difference, huh? 19 points for Mark Crow. Here's a steal by Mark Crow. On the lead pass to Armstrong. Puts it up on the glass. No good. They fight for the rebound. It's knocked out of bounds and a foul is called against Terry Chile of Duke. Chile with his second personal foul. Mark Crow came into this game averaging 12 points. He has 19 right now. 10 of those hit coming in the second half. 63 59. Duke by four with 4.33 remaining in the ballgame. And with Crow, it hadn't been a case of the big guy getting loose underneath uh, a lot of times. He's taking good percentage shots. He's 6'7", which is intermediate size in college basketball these days. He's just hit from the outside mostly and made the percentage shots inside as well. Here's Shepard. Shepard makes the first half of the one-on-one -on -one as Duke is over the limit. Steve now with 17 points in the ballgame. Shepard averaging 17 a game right now, 17.7 actually, and he goes over his average. Shepard leading Maryland with 18, Crow leads all scorers with 19, Duke ahead 63-61 with 4.25 remaining in the ballgame. They move it around, Brad Davis guarding Crow. Moses being guarded by Shepard. That's a box match that Crow and Davis, 6-2 against 6-7 if they get into it. Chile looking for the back door to Fox, but Maggot made sure the door was closed. Crow's running around outside, now he's down low. For those Duke fans that are watching, if you're wondering why Willie Hodge is not out there, he fouled out with 8.47 remaining in the ballgame. Now we have 3.55 left, and Duke ahead 63-61 to 61, as this we are gonna take this one down to the wire. Or corner-ish almost. They're moving the ball around, they're weaving, they're trying to keep the flow continuous. Duke is. Maggot slips uh, Fox from behind and gets hit with a personal foul. So Maryland is now at the limit with 16 fouls here in the second half. 340 remaining in the ballgame. Duke ahead of Maryland, 63-61. I don't think with that much time they want to foul away from the basket uh, without a threat of a hoop against them. Well, Maggot was looking for the steal there. All right, Lucas and Armstrong playing a little one-on-one. -on -one. Duke moving it around. 
not really trying to freeze, but look for the real good shot, but yet eating up a lot of time. And time right now is on Duke's side. Now we have 315 remaining. 63-61, Duke ahead by a couple. As uh, we get close to that three-minute mark, Tate Armstrong made a move to the basket, but Duke trying to eat away the clock. Bill Foster, who is concerned about the defense that Duke can play, because they score a lot of points. They are way below their scoring average, but they have also given up a lot less points than they normally do give up. Less than three minutes remaining, 2.45 on the clock, 63-61. Duke ahead as we look as uh, Lefty Drizel, a concerned Lefty Drizel at this point. Maryland is at the limited fouls. Next time they foul, Duke will go to the line one and one. Now we look at Bill Foster as he looks over his team moving that ball around. 2.25 remaining. Duke led by four at the half, increased their lead to as many as six. They now lead it by only two, and Duke calls for timeout. With 2.16 remaining. Well, Howard, they ran down two minutes and 24 seconds, and uh, Maryland committed a foul in that time, but the score hasn't changed in 2.24 as Duke has been successful in freezing the ball, leading by two points. Duke came into the game averaging 90.3 and giving up 85.6. They're going to be way below both of those figures. Maryland came into the game averaging 90 a game and giving up 74. And they, they will probably be both below those figures as well. So we're seeing a game that we really did not expect to see. Maryland has good speed, but Maryland uh, speed's been neutralized by Duke's speed defensively in getting back down the floor, taking away the fast break. And of course, when Maryland comes down, it has to set up the Duke zone defense, whether it be a 1-3-1 or a 1-2-2 or a 2-1-2, uh, has been most effective all night long. Deuce lost its big man, uh, Willie Hodge, with 847. I say its best offensive big man, a fellow who can score down low for you with a lot of time left. They've been able to hold him off of that Willie with Chile uh, doing a good job at Pro, uh, the outstanding player perhaps in the game for Duke, number 25, Mark Pro, And George Moses, outstanding at both ends, although not scoring much, number 53. Don't forget next Saturday night, February 28th, we'll bring you another of the exciting Miss Lou Television Network series of ACC basketball over many of these Miss Lou stations. Next Saturday at 8 o'clock, Maryland against Virginia. Moses almost fouled from behind by Davis at the two-minute mark. Now exactly two minutes remaining. All right, we're going to have to see if Maryland's going to commit the foul. Looking over the free throws shooter situation, foul it looks like it looks like George Moses is the worst free throw shooter, and if he gets the ball, they may want to foul him. 63-61, Duke ahead of Maryland with a minute and 40 remaining. And as I said, if I would think one guy would get fouled, there it is. There it is. Brad Davis it. fouled George Moses. They did. With a minute and 34 remaining, George Moses, who's only a 49% free throw shooter, fouled right there by that man, number 30, Brad Davis. And that was only the third on Brad, so that's uh, to Maryland's advantage. So George Moses goes to the line with a big one and one. If he makes it, he'll get a bonus. He misses it, and Maryland gets the rebound. They can go down the floor and try to tie it. Minute 34, remaining in the ballgame. Duke by two. He missed the free throw, and Maryland gets the rebound. Now we'll see if Lefty wants him to play for one shot to try to tie it up. Look for the good shot. He'll go right to the hoop. With a minute 25, I think they'll go for the hoop. They're not playing for one now. All right, Steve Shepard is the man. He goes in with it. And Moses comes down with the rebound. Moses, who missed the big free throw, makes the big rebound right there. 105 remaining in the ball game. Duke 63, Maryland 61. Exactly one minute for many. There's a very concerned Lexi Trudell. Duke might want to just freeze it away. They're keeping the ball away from Moses. Duke is. There, oh, there he is there with it. There it is. Davis fouled him, but they didn't call the foul. Crow gets the basketball. Here's Armstrong as we look at Bill Foster. 45 seconds remaining in the ball game. 63 61. John Lucas fouled Pete Armstrong. All right, we're going to chance to see this one again. Here's Armstrong dribbling to the left. Lucas will go right, reaching for the basketball. He knocks it to Armstrong and commits the foul. 77% shooter. The official.
Mitchell right on top of the play. Left Dinger's out, floating over Brian Maggot. And he gives him some instructions. Lucas commits his fourth foul. And to the line, Tate Armstrong, a 77% free throw shooter. Maryland is calling for timeout. So they try the old psychological weapon there to take the timeout. College basketball, you're allowed five a game. You don't have to take them uh, three and one half and two and the other. You can take five in the second half if you choose. So Maryland very well might come back here. I don't know how many timeouts they have remaining. Uh, might call another timeout to further let Tate think over the free throw. I wouldn't say this was uh, the kind of pressure it would be if it were a tie game or if Duke were down a point. Duke up by two with 40 seconds to go. Maybe they'll save that psychological strategy for, for later in the game, which seems uh, a little far-fetched with only 40 seconds left. That incidentally was the fourth foul on John Lucas. All right, last, two, last time these two teams played, Maryland beat Duke 102 to 91. That was, that was that full field out. Real close ball game, though, broken open in the last couple of minutes. They played all together. This is the 85th time these two teams have played. Maryland has uh, way behind Duke. Duke has won 52 and Maryland 32 in the 84 previous games. All right, we're going to get a look right there. Number 12, Tate Armstrong who goes to the free throw line with a very big opportunity. Score has, the line one and one. Score hasn't changed in three minutes. There it is, they took the other timeout. Maryland calls for still another timeout. So that's to get Tate to worry about it. And he doesn't look like the worrying type to me. They haven't scored either. The score was 63-61 uh, as it is now with 4.30 left. And now with 40 seconds left, 3.50 later, it's still 63-61 Duke. All right, as we get a look at Lefty Drizel, a very concerned Lefty Drizel. His team is 5-4 in the ACC. And with North Carolina State losing today to Clemson, I believe their record is 7-3 in the league. Of course, North Carolina is 8-1 overall. North Carolina State is 7-3. Maryland needs this victory to get to within one of NC State in the league. And, of course, uh, NC State still has a game left with Carolina. Maryland has beaten North Carolina State twice. So if they should win tonight and get into a tie with NC State, they would get the second position in the tournament. 40 seconds left in the ball game. Maryland trails by two, and Tate Armstrong will be on the line shooting one and one. And right now, out there on the court for Maryland, Ryan Maggot, Brad Davis, John Lucas, Steve Shepard, and Lawrence Boston. For Duke, George Moses played a tremendous game. Terry Chilly, Mark Crow, and Paul Fox. And right there, the biggest man on the floor at this moment, Tate Armstrong, with a one-and-one -one opportunity. Here it comes. Duke a three-point lead. Armstrong looking to stretch the lead to four, and he does. All right, Davis right down the floor, 65-61, Duke by four, with 35 seconds remaining. Lucas from in close. John Lucas closes the gap to two, and Maryland calls for what would probably be their last timeout. 65, 63. We used up eight seconds, and we're right back where we were. Still a two-point ball game. And this, of course, with 32 seconds left, gives Maryland a chance. You get to see, you know, what kind of really, what a real pressure-packed ball game this is. Look at the uh, pressure, uh, the, the look on number 25. That's right. Mark Crow, how intense he is right now. And then number 22, Paul Crow behind him, or rather, a Paul Fox behind him. You see the expression on his face as Armstrong sprays the free throw in, and he makes it. Yeah, this club has lost six out of the eight five-pointer less games it's been involved with as Bill Foster talks to his team and on the verge now of uh, perhaps winning one of those types because this has to be less than a five-point game unless we get into a wild overtime. 32 seconds left. Maryland took the timeout to decide whom they should foul when Duke comes up or how they will attempt to steal the ball, whether they go, they have to go to the all-court pressure and try to steal the ball, the inbounds pass. So that's why Maryland took the timeout. Perhaps it's last of the game. 
All right, uh, Vince will get a look now to see if it is Moses again that is fouled, he being, percentage-wise, the poorest free, short, uh, free throw shooter on the team. Throw will inbound for Duke. Lucas. Looking, finally gets it to Chile, who comes back to help out, and Steve Shepard fouls Terry Chile. Two-shot foul. Back here, a deliberate foul uh, in the back court. And Terry Chile, uh, they call it a two-shot foul. What kind of percentage does he have? Terry Chile is only a 51% free throw shooter. Not a bad guy to foul. That's right. Look at old lefty. Oh, man. Terry Chile, whoa, man alive. How'd you like to be him with 29 seconds remaining in the ball game and Duke ahead 65-63. Here he goes, the free throw. Good. <laughs> Terry Chile did not score a point the whole first half. He now has five. He's sort of taken up the slack for Hodge being out of there. He missed it. Missed the second one, so now it's a three-point Duke lead. Got to get five seconds remaining. Brad Davis by himself puts it up. Oh, and it goes around and out. Had the bucket what gone through it, would have counted. Is this a two-point shot? I guess it is if they call it on the defender. Well, the foul is on Paul Fox. That is his fourth. Boy, so Brad was, Davis will now go to the line. That if you was look at Fox. Really close to being an offensive foul, too, because he was leaning in as he let the ball go. Fox apparently hadn't gotten position. All right, now Brad Davis to the free throw line. A two shot foul. Foul in the act of shooting. 66 63. Duke by three with 21 seconds remaining as Davis silences the crowd momentarily. Davis has nine points all in this half. 21 seconds left. Now, he's looking around as to uh, deliberately miss it or, uh, you know, try to get it to Boston or Shepard underneath. Got to hit the rim, of course. Right. We'll see what he does. One uh, down by two. They need the ball, even if he makes this. His the shooting throw point. is no good. The rebound to Duke. Terry Chile with a rebound. With 18 seconds remaining, Davis commits the foul on Paul Fox. Well, he'd be another pretty good one to foul, I would think, because he hasn't played an awful lot. 65%. Well, you know, you, when they're less than 20 seconds, you better foul the guy with a ball, Howard. And that's what they did, uh, Davis grabbing him. And that's the fourth on Brad Davis. Again, the one-on-one. -on -one. What tension and pressure here. Paul Fox, only he's a senior now from Radnor, Pennsylvania. His free throw is no good. The rebound of Davis. He comes out of the pack. And he is fouled by Fox in the backcourt. Oh, man. It, Oh, man, we got 12 seconds. seconds to go in the ball game, and Brad Davis will go to the line, one and one. 66-64 the score. And now Brad Davis will go to the line as Fox fouls out of the ball game with 12 seconds remaining. Davis to the free throw line, one and one. He makes a vote. We are in a deadlock ball game. Duke leads 66-64 as Patton comes in and plays some O. Howard. And the reason why, as we take a look now at the Duke bench, the reason why they bring in Pat now Duke calls for timeout. Got to have up. Got to have the big man up there. They took Howard out of the game because they, in case Davis misses the free throw, they need the man in there for the rebound. Actually, uh, Davis missed the last one. The ball came off soft, and Pro actually beat Howard for the rebound. Howard had pretty good position, but the ball came down low, soft, and Davis couldn't outmuscle. Uh, I think it was I think it was Pro who got up to get the rebound. So they got the bigger guys in there now, down low, Boston and uh, and Patton. All right, there's a timeout on the court with a score, Duke 66 and Maryland 64. Let's pause right here for these messages from your local station. Tied with a free throw, 12 seconds remaining. Here's Davis. He misses a free throw. Duke gets the rebound. Nate Armstrong goes right by two Maryland players. And a foul is called on Lawrence Boston with four seconds remaining. Foul is on Boston, and the Maryland players thought that maybe more than one second ticked off on the clock, and that's what they're arguing about. But Lawrence Boston committed the foul his third. Lefty Grizel going over to the official. He thought that more than one second had ticked Actually, off on the clock. the foul had occurred just past midcourt, and they passed the ball over to the far side of the court. That's what Maryland complaining about. Give us back the second we lost of the pass. So here's Chile. He uh, did it before, and he gets another chance. Bill Foster giving instructions to his players as Chile to the line. One and a one. He makes it. 
give Duke a two-point lead. But Chile's got to make this one. Chile has to make this one. Duke leads by two. He makes this one. It's a three-point lead with four seconds remaining. He does. Gave it to him. And him the bucket it. counts. A, a timeout is called for by Maryland. Do they have that many timeouts remaining? Length of the court, and of course, Duke didn't contest it, didn't want to give the three point play. That was a pretty good pass. You know, that perfect pass to Chris Patton. And he laid it in, but uh, Maryland's still a point short at 68 67 with one second left, and Duke uh, presumably with a ball. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess Maryland had enough timeouts remaining. Of course, they pulled five, it seems to me, in the last uh, six minutes of this ball game. They called two, waiting for Tate Armstrong to shoot the free throw. And now this one, they must have taken one in the first half, and uh, they have to be at the limit now. All right, one second remaining in the ball game. Duke is leading Maryland, 68 to 67, and Duke has possession of the ball. Duke's last game was a heartbreaking overtime loss by one point to North Carolina State. So they're trying to get even. And they're two and six in ball games decided by five points or less. Nine times this year they've been in those games. Well, a loss here for Maryland really would hurt the Turks. First of all, they would drop to five and five in the league, and Duke would go to three and seven. That's not really the story, is that Maryland would hurt their chances for getting any higher than third in the ACC for seed position for the ACC tournament, which starts the first weekend in March. Of course, the number one team gets a bye, North Carolina, and here's Tate Armstrong shooting. All right, they have called a technical foul on Maryland for calling too many timeouts. Yeah. And Armstrong makes the free throw. Two points on the ball. That ought to do it. Now Duke leading by two with one second remaining. And as soon as the ball is touched by anybody inbound, that one second will tick off. Be ready for somebody to be fouled immediately. Here's Moses inbounding the crow. Did he foul him in time? No, he did not. He did not. Maryland, I believe, has, has been beaten by Duke. Yes, that's the story. The final score, Duke 69 and Maryland 67. As you look at the crowd here in Durham, North Carolina, just screaming out onto the floor. You would have thought they just won the national championship. Can you believe that, Howard? Look at him cutting down the cords of the basket 
And as you say, you usually only do that when you won a tournament championship. Washington and Baltimore rent its entire fleet of clean Chrysler Plymouth and similar cars on weekends at greatly reduced rates. Every car includes unlimited no-charge mileage. Call Avis for full details any weekend you need transportation. Final score, Duke 69, Maryland 67. Tonight from Cameron Indoor Stadium in Durham, North Carolina, you've just seen the second in a series of ACC basketball games featuring the University of Maryland Terrapins. Tonight's exciting game was brought to you by the following sponsors. They Nationwide Insurance, Nationwide is on your side. With the best wishes of Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company, Milwaukee, and the world. And your Lincoln Mercury dealer. Nobody has more kinds of cars for more kinds of people. This has been another in a series of exclusive sports presentations of the Mislu Television Network. For Vince Bagley, this is Howard David saying good night from Durham, North Carolina, where the final score is Duke 69, Maryland 67.